Hi guys, Asmo here and today I wanted to share with you what I think is the best way to play Winter Orb and basically one of the best builds in the game period that uh, I've seen so far and that I've ever played and this is a Winter Orb Trickster and if you look at the website POE Ninja which shows all of the builds, all of the characters that are high enough level to be tracked and you just select Winter Orb as a main skill for the character you'll see that mostly people are playing like uh, Elementalist, Occultist, Elementalist, Elementalist, Inquisitor, uh, Occultist, Elementalist and so on there are some Tricksters and so on because Trickster is very popular and you'll see like the damage average is like 100k, 150k, 200k, 300k, 100k, something like that, right? That people have and they're like level 100 so they're, they have so much damage available to them, you know, even level 150k because he's also using Ice Spear, right? So that doesn't, of course, the tooltip doesn't always tell the story, especially with Winter Orb which actually does way more damage than just what the tooltip says. But you'll see like what is the trend of the classes. However, if you sort them by DPS, you'll notice something interesting. Trickster, 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 trickster. Every single one except, okay, a couple of different ones down when we get to like 1 million. All of them are fucking trickster. And if you notice that this is the breakdown of the damage they deal. It's chaos and fire with winter orb, okay? So you'll notice that all of this follows the same pattern and all of this is based on a build. I don't know which of these guys started this, who made this build actually. So probably one of these guys uh, that has like the furthest progress in advancing their build. Uh, one of these guys invented this build, uh, I would guess. And it's basically uh, Eternity Shroud build that uses Etel Eternity Shroud and uses Pyre and Cold to Fire conversion. So basically convert your cold damage to fire and then you convert it to chaos or you get bonus chaos damage and you get so many of things that like count to twice like you get the uh, pre-converted damage added as chaos and the post-converted damage added as chaos there are so many fucking things that, uh, that are increasing the damage of your winter orb here so i'm basically uh, basing my character on this because I started with an Inquisitor and as, I, as you can see this is like these are like all clones because there is like mostly one way of, of building that character you'll notice like all of these are clones like they're, they have slightly different items but you see like Mark of the Shaper and Pyre, Mark of the Shaper, Pyre, Mark of the Shaper, Pyre, Solistus Vigil, Solistus Vigil this just has Owl's Uprising to use uh, Anger because he has no like mana nodes or anything and he has different things in his build like everybody uses that flask which I still need to get, Devouring Diadem so let me just break down on my own character how this build works and I'm gonna go first through uh, like the skill setup, the, the gems then I'm gonna go through the gear and then I'm gonna go through the passives right so uh, and I'm also gonna be showing like some footage afterwards of like me doing like T16 maps and delves. Delves are so insanely comfortable with this. So uh, my build is it's still expensive. You still need to invest some currency. This is not a this is not a beginner build. Like I'm saving right now. I need like 10 exalts or something to upgrade a weapon, right? And and things like that. Like this is a this is an expensive build if you wanna min max it. I'm right now just so you know. Uh, with increased duration, I was at 520k uh, damage, like on on the POE ninja, right? So like the best characters are like here, uh, you know, one million to four million, which is the extreme end, but like two million is the good amount the, to shoot for, right? If you want to min max this character, and then extreme amount, like you want to shoot for five million, but. I have half a million damage here on this winter orb. Uh, if you want to look at the tooltip, just the tooltip, like if you want to compare it to your own winter orb, orb quickly in game, just as you're standing in hideout without doing anything, this shows you here, uh, this shows me 73 average damage, right? And I, and I also have infused channeling, so of course um, I'm gaining power charges and frenzy charges, which while you play, uh, increase your damage and if if we use that then we can look at this and this is like 120k uh, average damage without Val Righteous Fire and thousands of different other things that are not counted. So basically how this build works. We have Winter Orb which we connect to Cold to Fire, that is the, the most important part, right? Cold to Fire. We're using GMP as well with it uh, just to shoot 
more projectiles and more targets. We use a concentrated effect. That's one of the highest damage that you can possibly get, for, if not like the highest damage uh, gems. Then you can have elemental focus or you can replace the elemental focus for uh, increased duration. Right now I'm testing this, but I think I prefer increased duration because the damage is enough to one shot everything anyway. So once you reach that high amount of damage, I think increased duration is definitely better and more comfortable, right? So I definitely like the increased duration and I'm probably gonna be uh, playing with that uh, most of the time, but I wanna just do test elemental focus. Uh, and also infused channeling, which gives you even more damage, right? So those are the gems you put in your Eternity Shroud, right? Eternity Shroud is the chest you want. And the main thing about it is that, uh, well, you get like level 20 glints of Eternity when hit, which is like a black circle that slows enemies in it, uh, which kind of uh, stacks also with uh, the aura that we have temporal chains, right? Because we're running temporal chains. Uh, but the most important thing is you gain 5% of extra elemental damage as chaos, extra, as chaos damage per Shaper item equipped. This is why you want all of your other items, if it's possible, to be Shaper items. Right now I'm gonna be trying to get Shaper Uniques, I'm gonna be trying to get Shaper Pyre, which you do basically by getting uh, something, like you can buy it, right, from someone uh, who's got it, or you can get this, you can get Sapphire Ring, which is a shaper base and you can chance it into pyre, right? So that's one thing. And I also have a leather, uh, shaper leather belt because I would like to eventually chance it into a headhunter, right? I don't know if that will be uh, possible this league, but if I could get a shaper shaped headhunter and shaped pyre, that would be just insane addition to this build, right? One thing you, pr I don't know if you is if there is a way to get it shaped, but I think there is no way of getting the devoured diadem diadem shaped because you can get it only from the mastermind fight and you cannot chance it which means you cannot chance a shaper base for it so i don't know if there is some kind of possible weird way of getting that but maybe you just go because we're not that far from eldritch battery so like you could get like here eldritch battery drop one aura and just get a shaped helmet and maybe that is enough damage especially if you're bossing i think while bossing it would be better uh, because your hits will ignore enemy monster chaos resistance if all equipped items are shaper items, right? But that's the chest, you want the Eternity Shroud, then the Devouring Diadem, because of course this has a lot of evasion and as a trickster we benefit from evasion on chest through uh, this, through Escape Artist, right? We get evasion per ES on helmet and ES per evasion on uh, body armor. So the Devouring Diadem here gives us plus level to socketed gems and we are running uh, Hatred, Zealotry and Herald of Ice. I'd love to get them level 21 and then they would be level 22 together with the plus one uh, from the Varying Diadem. And then I also would like to get a level 4 Enlighten, which would be level 5 with the Devouring Diadem. I corrupted my level 3 Enlighten and it went back to level 2 unfortunately, but somehow I still can fit all of the auras for 100% of my mana. So that's why I didn't bother to replace it yet, but I'm gonna get a level 4 Enlighten. Uh, and level 21 all of these auras so these auras of course you know uh, more cold damage multiplier which is then later uh, converted to fire and so on but you still get more cold damage it still applies more spell damage and also increased crit because we are doing uh, we have like with power charges uh, and everything I don't know how much crit it is but right now I'm at like 46 so with so with everything like with um with diamond flask the effective crit is like 70 something percent i i, I guess something like that um and then i also have another devouring diadem <laughs> actually uh which because i got them from the mastermind fight and i kept divining it until i get really high um energy shield which i got like 218 out of 220 and then I enchanted it with the Mastercraft uh, I mean the Veiled Craft 15% uh, Lightning and Chaos Resistance which is I think better than the quality and uh, intelligence even though this, this gives you a little bit more energy shield but you should get the energy shield from the rest of your gear and the Chaos Resistance on that and the Lightning Resistance is more valuable uh, I think because it's not, not a big difference like what is it like nine energy shield that's nine es difference uh so yeah it's not really worth it 
so I'm gonna be trying to enchant this to get winter orb enchant and of course you want winter orb has two additional stages that would be ideal or the 40% increased damage on winter orb um, so that's the helmet for this then the next big unique item is the solstice vigil which uh, basically gives you temporal chains for free so we are running temp chains uh, as you can see here and we are connecting them where are the temp chains i think here we have temp chains with additional quality from the enhance ideally with level 4 enhance and we are running here blasphemy uh, flame dash and temp chains and temp chains benefits from enhance by basically adding um, the additional uh, less action speed right because of that because of the additional quality um, flame dash gains from the quality cooldown recovery and blasphemy also gains something i think blasphemy gains increased effect of the supported curses so we get even more effect of the temporal chains so that's just our defensive uh, kind of layer of stopping melee mobs from attacking us and, and dealing damage to us right so that's also what the solstice vigil gives us and then of course it gives us shaper's presence for 10 seconds when you kill a rare or unique enemy which basically makes buffs on you expire slower which is working on winter orb as well so if all of the all of the things like infused channeling power charges winter orb charges all of our flasks everything just stays longer on our character uh, including like phase run for example right you can uh, run with phase run for longer keep your winter orb for longer that's why people don't necessarily need increased duration because if you're killing rare mobs uh, then you're gonna be increasing the duration of your buffs right so that's also very important uh, item for this and try to get of course as good rolls as you can right uh, so that you get maximum life and maximum damage then we've got pyre if you can get shaped pyre that's ideal right uh, this basically converts uh, our damage like we convert here 50 percent uh, of our damage right supported skills have 50 percent of cold damage converted to fire damage and then we convert 40 here so we effectively convert 90 percent of cold uh, to fire and if we ignite someone which of course means doesn't happen with the elemental focus but it does happen with the increased duration right uh, and it does happen with um it does happen with anger i think uh, still uh, so if you ignite someone and they die they are destroyed so this is basically like you are still basically shattering enemies and they like just explode uh and they have no bodies so you can uh, play around you know the uh, detonate dead mechanics and porcupines and so on that's another defensive layer and other than that also devouring diadem eats um uh, eats bodies like eats corpses uh, let me show you the skill of this it's here feast of flesh that's the devouring diadem automatically it does gain uh yeah consumes uh corpses around you and then it consumes them like every now and then i don't know how often this triggers um it triggers every now and then and consumes the corpses and then just uh, recovers your life and mana and energy shield and that's why you you don't like that's another way of like regenerating all of your shit that's, that's why we don't need like uh, specifically leech or recovery of other things because we can recover life and mana like that so even in no region maps and so on we got this recovery right glimpse of eternity that's the thing from the chest right that just uh, slows the action speed of enemies okay so what else we have here uh, so these are the important items that basically every build will have mark of the shaper would be another thing that you would like to get here i don't have that currently didn't have the currency for it yet and then weapons weapons ideally ideally you want um depending on whether you want the crit uh, or the elemental damage i think the elemental damage is actually stronger if you have enough crit uh, but of course you know currency kind of limiting me so my weapons are still uh, something that i would like to upgrade but they're decent what you're looking for is either the 50 percent increased global crit strike chance uh, dagger or 40 percent increased elemental damage which is like the abyssal scepter i think and opal scepter or crystal one of those that has 40 percent increased elemental damage and then you want it of course to be shaped and you get the shaped mode uh, of sh the shapers tier one which you want 20 gain 20 percent of elemental damage as extra chaos damage and that's a fuck ton of damage that you're gaining and then you want a multi-craft uh, increased spell damage 
uh, and I also didn't have the craft, but the craft you're looking for, uh, if we go here, I got it now, increased spell damage and gain uh, percent of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage, right? That's what you want, like uh, rank 3 ideally, right? So you, you, will, gain in, you will gain increased spell damage and uh, non-chaos damage as chaos damage, then you want to get just pure spell damage, then you want to gain uh, add cold damage to spells, and then you want to get increased critical strike chance uh, or global critical strike multiplier, right? Those are the mods you want. And then my second weapon has like just random weapon. I, I happened to find that also was like shaped and had the elemental damage or scales damage and just added spell damage on that, right? Then uh, boots, you just want resists and speed, nothing else like resist speed and life. And in my boots, I have um, the phase run righteous fire setup. So what we got here is uh, 20 quality phase run, like all of my gems that are that need quality have quality, right? I got all gems here, 20 quality, 20 quality, quality on increased duration is very important. So we are running increased duration here on cast when damage taken immortal call um, because that increases the duration without having to level up the gem. And then we have increased duration normally here in the chest on winter orb. Uh, then we have increased duration here, which benefits Righteous Fire, uh, which I'm using Vol Righteous Fire, which basically, again, in gain I gain 28% more spell damage, and the duration is really long, the AoE is really big, it's very nice to play with, and uh, increased duration. Enhance also uh, adds to the, speed, to the increased movement speed of Phase Run, so ideally you want to level 4 Enhance, and the phase run will have just so much speed like you can see how how much i'm zooming with this character like because of the phase run and because of the shaper's presence and increased duration on everything this the the you basically have permanent phase run whenever you want right because you also have really really fast cooldown recovery uh through passives belt just have cold added cold damage you know increased cold damage and then life and resistances and that's it ideally you'd like like a shaped headhunter or something like that right that would be the the perfect uh, belt and so let's go through the passives right I, also gloves gloves you can get like um you can get either supported by slower projectiles which also adds you increased projectile damage on the shaped uh, base or you can get faster cast speed and then just life and resistances right that's what you want uh flasks uh just basic uh life speedy flask uh, silver flask i like uh, with the, i like maximum uh charges so that i can use it twice I have removed curses so that I don't need to reroll re -roll maps that have shitty curses on them and then uh, bleed and freeze you know at series prom is also very important because and you want the maximum roll right 15% of elemental damage is extra chaos damage um, so the passives the passives are very interesting there are a few ways of doing that depending on what jewels you have I have shitty jewels uh, like these jewels that I have will cost you like not that much you can buy them for like you know 20 chaos max or whatever right they're not that great um just three stat jewels but ideally you want like four stat jewels that have crit chance crit multi uh life and it's called damage or called damage skills or something or another crit uh, mod uh, but what you want to do is basically you go here you pick up the standard like elemental spell damage some life and speed you want to pick up some dex and strength nodes movement speed nodes wherever you can um, here we have damage projectile speed and AOE uh, we pick up this jewel we pick up this uh, life and ES and crit multi here we pick up more crit multi here we pick up this because this gives you increased fire and cold damage which which scales both which scales basically twice our winter or because we are because we are converting right so we benefit from both so this is like 16% increased damage um, increased cold damage and crit uh and then we go here we get nimbleness because this is crit multi uh crit uh, chance cast speed and movement speed which is amazing uh here we got uh minus total mana cost whatever it's just more damage for channeling this is these are these are fairly good nodes um then we go here for crit we get both frost walker and fire walker because um the cast speed with fire skills that will benefit your flame dash and you get the increased fire damage and fire res and you get increased cold damage and cold res and cast speed with, with winter orb and both of those scale our winter orb damage uh, more jewels in life 
MOM. Of course, we don't take this. We don't take the mana nodes behind it because we are using Eldritch Battery and reserving 100% of our mana. And this does not benefit. Like our mana pool is basically our ES, right? So don't take these nodes. Uh, that, that's a mistake to do. Uh, then we're just getting more blah, 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 like life, random elemental damage. Like everybody takes these nodes, no problem. These are very good nodes, the, the ones that lead to dark arts. While you're dual wielding, you have um, increased cooldown recovery speed. Also, these are nice. The movement speed and spell damage are also fine. Uh, but the cooldown recovery is really nice to just always be able to uh, use your phase run and flame dash. It's super fast recovery. And then just crit multi, uh, some more life and uh, reduced mana reservation and increased effect of non-curse auras because we are using four non-curse non auras, right? We are using Herald of Ash, Herald of Ice, Zealotry and Hatred and all of those benefit from these nodes, right? Increased AoE doesn't matter, but we want the reduced reservation and um, if you want to like not use these nodes, then you're going to have to drop one of the auras uh, or you're going to have to have, I don't know if we can, I think we can drop them if I get level four enlighten, but I still benefit from the increased effect of non curse auras. So it's actually still good, right? So that's basically it. That's basically the build. And uh, you can see in the background how the build performs. Like it runs really smoothly. Um, doing t my T16 um, uh, Deserts, Desert Springs, sorry, Desert Springs. Uh, Desert Spring is a very good map to Elder because the sustain on it is so easy. Like there are so many mobs. It's a very easy map with easy layout. Tons of drops. It's it's a perfect map to uh, Elder, and people have been doing it uh, last season as well. So that's uh, basically I'm I'm copying that. Switching to this build was like the best decision I made in Path of Exile, and I definitely recommend it. It does require some budget, but you can start with just the uh, Eternity Shroud, right? If you just start with the Eternity Shroud. I mean, you can just start with regular Winter Orb, right? Winter Orb is a powerful skill, powerful skill, but you're not going to have this type of damage without going, you know, without investing in this build. This build definitely shines when you invest in it. I think with zero investment, I guess Elementalist or Inquisitor are still uh, fine, but I really definitely like the Trickster because you can just keep improving the build. When I was playing the previous build, the Chaos Damage build on Trickster, I felt like I hit a wall and I couldn't find ways to improve it. But here, so many things I can improve, you know, like I can get um, either the Shaper's Mark Shaper's mark, or, or I can get the another ring that increases the Herald skill, the new ring, right? The uh, Mark of Anger, Mark of whatever, like, uh, what is it called? The, the new rings, right? The new fractured rings that give you increased herald uh, damage and stuff. That's another good ring to get, right? Uh, you, I don't know if you can get it shaped if you like somehow get fractured shaped items. I don't know if that's possible, but you can also get just uh, mark of the shaper, right? That's also amazing. And then pyre can be shaper or elder item. I don't know which one actually would be better if the sixty percent spell damage is better. Uh, then uh, the five percent extra elemental damage of scales. Maybe actually this is better. Maybe, maybe this should be actually shaped as well. Well, certainly if you're going for all shaped items, right? Um, so that's it for this build. If you have any questions about it, uh, you can ask them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.
so wonderful. You're a 